Physically based shading is the primary reason that Camouflage decided to make the transition to Unity 5 in the middle of production for Republic. It seemed like all the skills we'd been utilizing up until then were perfect for physically based shading. So what you're getting in a physically based system is twofold. You're getting a wider, more expressive palette of aesthetic tools, and you're also getting a system that functions in a more consistent and predictable manner. And once you get used to the authoring software and the whole process, what you're getting is something that's ultimately going to be saving you time. It actually increased productivity, believe it or not. With all these additional maps that you have to actually use to create these physical based shaders, it's labor intensive. But the one thing you can rely on in a physical based shader is consistency. Each scene feels exactly the same as the others, but in a great way, because the metals look exactly like metal, because the plastics look exactly like plastic, and because the brick looks like brick. When it comes down to proof of concept, at least for me, you always want to try to find worst case scenarios. What are you going to end up hitting and a wide range of spaces. Republic's atrium space had a great mix of organic hard surface, dielectric materials. It was essentially a perfect test case to really see the potential of physically based shading. Early on, whenever we were developing just for mobile, uh, we were pretty much putting all that information of a texture in a diffuse. So it was diffuse only. We had no use for spec or gloss or anything like that. And we very quickly got the, a blueprint in my head of how these new shaders are actually more or less computing the, the information that's being fed into them. Most people are used to diffuse, spec, normal maps. With a legacy shader system, artists are doing everything by eye. They're tweaking all the little details by eye, sort of making sure that those assets look good, but just under specific lighting conditions. Artists have gotten into this habit of adding a ton of noise to every texture map, to taking baked occlusion and multiplying that in every te single texture to get any sort of a visual dynamism. And that's not only not needed in this model, but engaging in some of those practices can lead to less predictable or just incorrect results because these textures are being used in a fundamentally different way. It became a very automated process. And so we're now able to utilize a diffuse map, a specular, map, a gloss map, essentially, and then of course the normal map. And with those things put together, everything pretty much comes in flawlessly. We uh, completed our proof of concept of how we were going to you know, leverage the new physically based shading. And along the way, we realized we have thousands of textures and materials out there in the current game that we need to convert. Uh, as you may know, a new technology is really hard to find a, a outsourced vendor that can take advantage of it in a timely manner, and then I remembered uh, blue papillons, actually. And so essentially we're taking these textures and importing them into the game, and then we'll be setting them up with the materials they're associated with. So everything has gone extremely smoothly, everything looks great. You know, it's a lot of work, but it's totally, totally worth it. We're putting a lot of content into the game. Even though it's essentially the same content, we're updating everything to a T. As it goes along, the more, the further we get along, the more and more it becomes this you know, cohesive, beautiful scene that I can't stop looking at. And so the next step for us, now that we've made such a huge, drastic improvement with physically based shading, is to put those physically based shaders to the test using Unity 5's new lighting system.